All right, uh, I will call the select board meeting to order. Please let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> All right, so we'll open the meeting with our public forum. Uh, is there anyone who would like to share ideas, opinions, or ask questions regarding town government? Okay, seeing none. Where's Bubba? That's all right. Uh, so now we will move on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda items are, number one, to approve the June 11 minutes, number two, to approve a parade permit for Interstage Left Theater for its annual Wicked 5K fundraiser on October 27, 19, and three, to accept the resignation of G. Michael Pierce from the Board of Appeals and thank him for his service for the town. Would any member like to break out items for a separate vote? I, uh, the uh, meeting minutes for uh, our last meeting, there was one small change Okay, so you'll like to break out uh, number one. Anyone else? No? Okay. Mr. Catino. Oh, wait. No. Uh, so I would like to request a motion to approve the remaining consent agenda, agenda items. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Carries. Okay, Mr. Catino. Yes, it was just that in the water and sewer rates discussion, it was, uh, it was stated that... Um, uh, new system would have uh, have been. Uh, we're, oh, to shoot! Where, where's the next point? Hold it. Uh, Mr. Catino knows expressed concern. It was noted that the Abrams Group reports of the last few years have pointed out the problem. Have not pointed out the problem. Is what I actually said. Okay, Mr. Kamalo, take care of that. So noted. That was my only change. All right, so if that's the only change, uh, we'll request a motion to approve uh, item number one on the consent agenda items. As amended. As amended. As amended. So moved. Oh, so moved. Second. Okay. Sorry. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. That carries. <clears throat> uh, change of manager, Zio's Quattro Incorporated, 22 South Street. Uh, select board will consider uh, approving a change of manager from Kimberly Winchman to Paul Winchman for Zio's Quattro Incorporated at 22 South Street. Uh, board members, do you have any questions based on your review of the meeting materials and what you heard from the applicant? I have a question for the town manager. <coughs> Shall I click, please? Mr. Her? Town manager, are you aware of any reason why we should consider anything but approving the change of manager position? First of all, Mr. Witzman, you want to come join us? Through the chair, um, I'm not aware of any issues pertaining to uh, Mr. Paul Winchman, who is proposed as the manager. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Um, Town manager, he's Mr. Wickstrom is uh, has all the qualifications, the tip certifications, and everything that we would require of a of manager. Correct, and he has many years of service. Uh, I apologize, woman. I can't hear you. So, uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Nasrula asked if you were tip certified, had all those qualifications, and Mr. Kamala was saying that you do. Yes, I am. Y yes, and I was also adding that you have many years of service. I would say, sir, yes. <coughs> okay. Anyone else? Anyone else want to? Someone want to make? I have a little question. Um, permitting comments. The Board of Health said they hadn't received their food applications along with the change of management information i assume they have got that by now yes ma'am okay okay mr catino you want to make a motion uh make a motion to um oh, uh, to, to, what's the exact one you got it right here sorry sir you are thank you I request, uh, I, I, I'd like to make a motion to approve the change of manager from Kim, Kimberly Wish, Winchman to Paul Winchman for Zio Quattro at uh, 22 South Street. Second. 
Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Carries, thank you. Th thank you, Selectman, for your service and your time. Thank you. <clears throat> all right, so we posted, uh, we're a little early for that. Um, can we do the annual appointments? We can. By select board, all right. Uh, let's see. So tonight we're considering several appointments, and I first want to thank everybody who's volunteered to serve on a board or committee this year. The appointments have been divided up so that the appointments to some boards and committees will be made tonight, and appointments to others will be made at the next meeting. I also want to note that sometimes we have more applicants than vacancies for some boards, but not enough for others. So if you don't get appointed to one, think about volunteering for another. Uh, first, let's take up the appointments to boards and committees. We have a list, and we'll take them in order. This affordable housing trust fund. So, Mr. Kamala, how do we want to do this? In the past, we've just kind of standing. In, my suggestion, respectfully, is that the board has a standing motion to approve the candidates, uh, and then you call out the board and call out the names. Okay. Just give me a minute to get to that page on here. Oh, there's a page that has them all. So we are on the following boards and committees will have vacancies on June 30, 2019 or sooner. Uh, committee name, Affordable Housing Trust Fund Board. Total mem number of members, expiring terms, four, like two years. New person, John Morris. Um, so we have, so for this committee name, for the um, Affordable Housing Trust Fund Board, we have five members, four expiring. Are there, do I see that there's three people that are applying for the four positions that are open? Is that what I'm reading? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. That is correct. Okay. So I would. Uh, so before we jump into a standing yeah. motion, if I could, please. Sure. Um, how many of the various boards and positions are going to be contested that we're looking at this evening, if any? There are a few problems, not many. Yeah, there are a few. We, we're looking them up, and I think that's why perhaps a standing motion might work, where you may place a hold on the positions or the boards where you have more than one applicant for a single position, similar to what we do with the consent agenda. But the, the difference being... Yeah, but if you have a standing motion, then we get to one of those where there's a conflict. They're not a conflict, but there's just more than we have spots for. How are we going to sort through that? Um, have you have in it, you place a hold, and then you have a discussion, and then, okay. yeah, and then okay. vote, and then move on. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we're just basically going to stop yeah. the standing motion when yeah. we get to those scenarios. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, Mr. Chair, I would suggest that the Board of Selectmen or the Select Board... Um, have put a standing motion on the table to approve the applicants whose names will be read off for each of the various committees um, until another member brings up a question about one of the names. Okay. Um, <laughs> I wish John Morris was here tonight because he has applied for three or four different positions and I, I'd like to know what he really wants. He, he, I mean, I, mean, I guess we can put him on all four, but... He may can want them all. Yeah. He may have Through the chair, we can answer that question. Oh, good. Yeah. He withdrew from personnel committee. He withdrew from the personnel committee. Okay. Uh, I'll second it. <laughs> so, uh, is there any further discussion on the motion? For the, for the standing affirmative motion. Affirmative. No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain. Okay. All right, so he's refer, uh, pulled out from the Personnel Commission. Okay, so the Affordable Housing Trust Fund Board, uh, we have three spots, Beth Malloy, Aman Hydri, and John Morris, uh, for four spots. So we're good with that? So we would just take, uh, we would then do another quick vote, all in favor. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. CONCOM, Conservation Commission, 
Uh, we have three number of expiring terms or vacancies for three years. We only have one applicant, Ed Harrow. I would like to say all in favor. Of Aye. 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 Didn't we get an email about from yep. the chair and endorsing chair. a couple of other candidates as right. well? I don't understand. So they will apply after the deadline, so they'll be on the next agenda. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Those will be on the next okay. agenda. Okay. <laughs> Council on aging, aging, I'm sorry. Uh, there are two expiring terms of vacancies for three years. We have three people, Sheila Frackleton, Don Wolf, and John Palich. Are any of those three here right now? Now here's, here's where I have, I have a, a question. I would like to find out from Don Wolf, which he's also applied for the Cultural Council, which is the next one down. <laughs> and Sheila Frackleton is new, but she's been working at the Senior Center for quite a long time as a volunteer in a number of different places. And, and they would like to see her on that committee, but I, I wouldn't want him, he's been on it and so has John. Uh, if he didn't want to move. So do we want to maybe, since we're a little ahead of schedule, should we maybe table this till towards the end of the? Table that one and the next one below it. Yeah, in, in so 50. Well, yeah. Again, well, he can go on the next one below it also. I mean, it, it fits, but does he want to? <laughs> well, in the cultural committee, there's seven vacancies and two ap three applicants, so. Yeah, he can go on the next one. The culture, but the uh, and that's the one he he put down was his number one choice with the council. Well, I would assume if, if someone's applying for more than one, I'm assuming they want to be on more than one. No, yeah, well then I don't know. It could be just I, I don't know. But what we have three. We've just happened before that people positions. people yeah you don't you don't want to you don't want to put people on three different committees because they, they probably just thought that might be full. You know, and fill up their week. And, you know, that's, that's they will fill up their week. <laughs> they shouldn't have applied for more than one if they don't want to go on more than one. <laughs> this is where the bogged down part kicks in. Yeah. Into. So okay. yeah. let's table. Really All right, let's table this. Yeah, yeah, let's table this. Let's keep going. Um, so the next is historical. The historical cultural council. We have seven expiring terms and vacancies for a two-year length. Uh, it looks like we have three people applying for that. Diva Marie Nelson, Don Wolf, Andrea Wilk. Um, so I think we have Ms. three expiring terms. I'm sorry? Ms. Nelson withdrew today. Okay, so we have two. We have Don um, Wolf and today? Andrea Wilk. Uh, so I will take them all in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, good. Carries. Uh, Hopkinton Historical Commission. We have. Uh, See three full members for three years, and we have one, two, three people, correct, that are going for this, looks like. So all in favor of accepting Beth Watson, Nanda Barker Hook, and Christine Remby. Aye. 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 Oh, sorry. All opposed? I was waiting for the <laughs> second. <laughs> okay. Okay. And it carries? I think so. Okay. Yeah, you're good. Keefe Tech School Committee. Uh, we have one expiring term of vacancy, and we have Ruth Knowles, who has applied. No application, but. Reappointment, yeah. Uh, she is. She is. Reappointment. Yeah. So, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Uh, Marathon Committee. We have five vacancies for three years. We have Amon Hydri and Patricia Keating. We just put Amon Hydri on the uh, first one on the first day. Yeah, but so I'm assuming that. This is the, not correct. I, I was in touch with the marathon committee because I said, I, I can't believe you have five vacancies and they don't. What happened was. Okay, hold on a sec. Let's pull this to the okay. end. Okay. Oh, okay. We want to get through the ones that were easy, then we tackle the ones that can be okay. six okay. hours. Thank you. Just doing my job as your parliamentarian. So. <laughs> Roger that. Keep it going. We're in a building. Uh, okay. So we are permanent building committee. We have two terms uh, that are expiring or vacant. Uh, we have two applicants, Rob Scott and Mike DiMaggio. 
All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Good. Personnel committee, we have two vacancies for three years. We have two applicants, Patricia Sinicole and John Morris. All in favor? John Morris withdrew, right? He did withdraw. Okay. Uh, okay, so all in favor of appointing Patricia Sinicole? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries. Is John Morris going to be in the tax relief? Is he out of everything? John Morris, did you take his name out of everything? No. No. Okay, so. Tax Relief Committee, we have one term uh, available for three years, and we just have John Morris going for it. So, all in favor of appointing John Morris? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Okay, good. Upper Trail, Upper Charles Trail Committee, we have two members. Uh, no, I'm sorry, we have two full members, two associate members, and one, one Board of Selectmen member for three years. Uh, we have two people seek reappointment, Jane Moran and Barry Rosenblum. Um, and I'm, I'm the Selectmen member. Okay, and Mr. Catino. Uh, so, we will add, so our, I'm assuming that, uh, yep, so Moran and Rosenblum are both full members, mm -hmm. and John will be... Uh, the Board of Selectmen members, so all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Good. Did you have any associates on that? Didn't you mention two others? There's two alternate members, but there's no one that's applying for, yeah. for that. Uh, the Youth Commission, we have three vacancies for three years. Uh, we have Alice Joyce, who's new, and Terry Forensic, and Don Ronan, uh, which are the three, so all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, select board appointments, traffic constables, formerly called special officers for three-year terms. John Krause, Dan Smith, uh, reappointment, so the new ones would be John Krause and Dan Smith. Uh, and the, should I read the list of people that are seeking reappointment? Please. Okay. <laughs> uh, Evan Brooks, Megan Durad, Jane Goodman, Derek McGill, Darlene Haynes, Haynes, uh, Stephen Ayatarola, John Litchfield, James Collins, Doug Lewis, Carl Harris, Steve Slammon, Doug Oliver, Stuart Montgomery, Tom Poirier, Bill Proctor, Bob Santucci, Rick Flannery, Tom Griffin, Cynthia Velovson, Braden Louise, Dave Shane, Chuck Wallace, Town Council, Ray uh, Mayaris and Harrington, J. Raymond Mayaris, Labor Council, Nick Anastonopoulos. Um, so all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Good. Town manager appointments, Jerry Holland for parking clerk for a one-year term. Bill Proctor, animal control officer, one-year term. Liz Jeffrey, inspector of animals, one-year term. Director of municipal inspections, recommended appoint. Oh, wait, should we vote on those other ones first? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, all together, that's fine. All together, yes. okay. Uh, Director of Municipal Inspections recommended appointments for one-year terms, Charles DeBritz, Plumbing and Gas Inspector, Peter Zareski, Assistant Plumbing and Gas Inspector, Dan Hunt, Assistant Plumbing and Gas Inspector, Ed Hicks, Wiring Inspector, Ed Hicks, Person to Cut Wire in Case of Fire, Jim Melnick, <laughs> Assistant Wiring Inspector, Kevin Barre, Assisting Wire Inspector, Jess Palmer, Public Wire, William Robinson, Public Wire. Uh, all in if, favor? If I may, Mr. Chair, um, there are additional names. Okay. Uh, Michael Christopher Mutual Aid Building Inspector. Uh, Jane Adams, Public Wear. Jessica Palmer, Public Wear. James Wright, Public Wear. Chelsea Adams, Public Wear. William Robinson, Public Wear. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Good. Uh, all right. Looks like we're. Zipping through that. Way to go, Mr. Chairman. Through these resumes, blah, blah, blah. All right, so I guess we can move on to the next. So we'll come so back to those. When do you want to come back to those? Probably after the, uh, well, uh, I don't see anybody. Should we do it now? Do you think we can bang it out in 10 yeah, minutes? Yeah, yeah, we'll take one of them. Yeah. Which one do you want to do? What was the first one we didn't get through? I don't know. Yeah. Marathon Committee? Marathon oh, yeah. Committee. <laughs> that's a, that's a, um, 
what they think happened was last year the public service people used to be appointed yearly. They now got appointed for a three year term last year and they're added into that number. So they only have one position. And then there was another oversight with the technical department and Mr. Adam Monroe, who has been on the committee for many, many years, and he's got an email thing back and forth since May 1st for his application, and his application isn't in there, but he has been on the committee for a good number of years. He's been in charge of the VIP security up at the high school, and he's uh, the son of Dr. Bobek, so you can imagine, I mean, he's, he's been on for a lot of years, and he's not anywhere in the town's files. His name doesn't, it just doesn't show up. So we want to make sure that he gets his appointment tonight, because he's been sworn in downstairs, but for some reason, the, the files don't have him. This is on the Marathon Committee? He's on the Marathon Committee, yes. Okay. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, oh, Chuck Wallace. Oh, we have uh, Ted Cadillac, who has also been on the committee. Well, he hasn't been on the committee. He's been coming to all the committee meetings because he's been doing the parking up, up at EMC for EMC. But he would like to be put on as a member of the committee now. So there are, in there essence, are two okay, so four that people have now gone going through for, for one spot. <laughs> there are three people going for one spot. Cadillac and Monroe, but uh, well, actually, Monroe shouldn't have been going for spot. He should have it. We just want Doesn't to make sure like that he's, he's on there. Yeah, 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 ye
recommendation offered has the support of the public safety officers and John can provide the details. Good evening. Uh, through the chair, this is a required replacement of the water main on Cedar Street and this is uh, the result of funds that were approved a year and two years ago for the design and construction. We met with the contractor, with the engineer, with the police chief, and with the fire chief, and unfortunately, I say unfortunately because it will cause disruption, unfortunately the only way to construct the, the water main reconstruction or replacement is with night work. Uh, we looked at the width of the paved road on Cedar Street, and it's essentially from Main Street to the bottom of the hill, um, and there, there's just not sufficient width there to provide for uh, an excavator, a dump truck, and two lanes of traffic. We looked at the possibility of routing traffic through Walcott Street during the day, uh, but that proved to be too sharp of a turn off of Main Street in order to safely accommodate. The traffic so we're requesting approval from the board of uh, excuse me from the select board to conduct that night work okay is there anyone present who would like to comment on the proposal for night work okay seeing none board members any questions or thoughts mr her so 9 p.m to 5 a.m cedar street which is right outside here just over the way um, there's houses there. I mean, that's that's tough duty for those residents. If, and I hear you in terms of um, you know, daylight, daytime issues and traffic and congestion and all that. But what are we have we had a chance to think through how this is going to impact those residents living right there, and what can be done, if anything, to minimize the disruptions to their sleep, which I assume most of them are going to be doing in those hours. So through the chair, again, I said, unfortunately, uh, this is the only way that we can foresee the construction occurring is at night because of the traffic flow. Uh, we did look at the possibility of, for example, not doing uh, or, or taking off the backup alarms on the trucks, but that was proved to be a safety problem and would conflict with OSHA. We don't want trucks backing up without that, the beeping noise. Um, I, I guess the only thing to, to state is that the work in front of the homes will probably only be two nights worth in front of each individual home moving down the street, and that's for two different periods. The first is during the actual physical construction or installing the new main, and then later as they go back and they put in the services. So it, it will be probably two nights towards the beginning of the project and two nights towards the end of the project. Uh, the contractor did state that if there was any work that could be accomplished during the daytime that doesn't require them to have an excavator and a dump truck in the paved way that they would conduct that work during the daytime. The contractor would like to do it during the day, but uh, the, the safety officials just don't believe that we can get traffic through there in an efficient and safe we manner. we do the cutting during the day? Yes. Are they going to use a big blade and just cut this pavement out? Yes. Um, can we do the cutting during the day and then just hauling at night? Is that possible? So uh, again, th through the chair, uh, any work that can be accomplished during the day that will still allow two lanes of traffic to flow, they will do that during the day. And that includes things like uh, cutting the pavement initially. Uh, if there's any uh, work that, again, doesn't require the work of an excavator. Because the problem, the problem comes about when we have the excavator next to the dump truck in that narrow width of roadway. Okay. And have you notified all the residents of this project? We have. We handed out, we went door to door and handed out notices, letting them know that there would be a meeting tonight. We left numbers for myself and the project engineer and uh, the design engineer in the event that they had any questions. To, to date, the only, the only concern that we heard back was from the post office. Uh, just they have employees that show up at 3 a.m. and they wanted to make sure that they could arrive. But other than that, to date, we haven't heard any response back. Okay. Mr. Casino. So to, to that point, will we be able to have steel plates or something down for those employees so that the uh, mail must go through? Absolutely. <laughs> My father was a, worked for the po U.S. Postal Service, so I have to make sure that that's, that is protected. That's an easy one for us to accommodate. Okay. To the chair. Yes. Um, since the end of June, when it starts, that means the 4th of July uh, weekend would be 
there would be construction going on. Is there any way that we could kind of move it just so people can enjoy the, that weekend? And Through the chair, uh, because we had to come before the select board and the meeting is tonight, the contractor won't mobilize until after the 4th. Okay. we got a horrible spread to run. I understand. Uh, the other, be a beauty too. They, they could make it horrible. Yes, they could make it horrible. The other thing, Mr. Chairman, is that the water main replacement is going to be a requirement for the work that's going to be done on the Main Street Corridor project. So it's essential that we get in and we replace that water main there so that the work can happen associated with the, the, uh, the corridor project. Okay. Mary Jo, anything? No, I, uh, I read it over and you got to do what you got to do. Good. So I will look for a motion, number six. So move to approve the uh, night work uh, when required. That would be the motion, it's kind of specific, the when Understood. required part. Okay. Second. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, carries. Thank yep. you very now much. we got to go back to, thank you, John. We have um, a tree hearing a little bit later. Norman, do we have to wait until 8.40 for that? Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, we, have a, we have another public hearing. Right, we have the 7 o'clock. We're yeah. going to open now. Yeah. I'll be here. All right. Um, all right. So, the, let's see where we're at here. I will request a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. Okay. All, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. So this is a public hearing so the board can hear from the public before setting the municipal water and sewer rates for the next fiscal year. I will turn it over to the town manager's team for a brief presentation, then we'll open it up for, for public comment. Uh, first we'll talk about the sewer system, then water. Mr. Kamal. Yes, um, through the chair, in your meeting packet, we distributed the public notice uh, for the hearing. The recommendations are presented by town staff on the water and sewer rates. We also included the reports that were put together alongside their summaries by Mark Abraham's group. Uh, the consultant, consulting group that has helped us over the years in addressing this issue. Big picture. What I think the information presents to you uh, is that the current financial position of the water enterprise is satisfactory for the level of revenues predicted. The projected financial position is fair for the level of revenues that is, the current revenue is sufficient to cover both operating and debt expenses in the immediate future. However, as you will hear from the finance team, um, we do have concerns uh, going forward. Relative to the sewer enterprise, as we've discussed over the years, we are facing a structural deficit and we'll provide recommendations to the board as to how to overcome this issue. Uh, medium term and long term. Uh, at this point, uh, with the choice permission, I want to pass this over to uh, the finance team who will then uh, outline the recommendations from staff. Great. Uh, to the chair and the members of the board, uh, we provided a summary sheet along with the extensive report developed by the Abrams Group. And speaking to the summary sheet, the first few points on that sheet review what we discussed at the last meeting. Namely, that the sewer enterprise fund is in a difficult position because of a bulge in debt service expense in FY20 and 21, and because of a loss of revenue tied to the system's two biggest users. The sewer enterprise needs dramatic rate increases in both years, 20 and 21, to remain in the black as required by our state regulator. The need drops off after FY21 when a significant bulge of the debt is paid off. The two options shown on the sheet, option one is for a 35% across the board increase this year to keep our position up to state standards. Option two raises about the same amount of money but does it by creating an additional tier level 
and by using different rate increases for different consumption levels. This is one way to respond to the concern board members have expressed about rate shock impacts on low-income seniors. This is a good and innovative option, but it is not perfect because although it would provide relief to many seniors and others of limited means who don't use much water, it would provide the same relief to many people of all ages who don't use much flow but who can afford to pay their share. So it's a good option, but not a perfectly focused option. Uh, but we did think it was important to give you several options that would keep the system compliant. So at this point, we will take questions from the board. Again, would, this would you like water comments now, or are you going to do sewer first? We'll do then? sewer first. Yeah, do a sewer first. Water, then right. water. Great. Yes. Okay. Comments? Mr. Nasrullah? I just hope that in the in, in next year that that we have uh, some better outlook. You know, uh, just you know, it just seems like every year that uh, we're we're surprised. It's we, we think that we have uh, money in the money in the bank that we can. You know, I remember two years ago we thought that we could give a, a, a rate a rate break to people. And then to find out that all of a sudden, wow, we're 68% short on South Street, and we're 10% down on everywhere else. You know, I, 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 I'm hoping that that with with all this guidance, that that you know, that's what I think what we pay for. That's what we're looking for. You know, we're we're here to be educated, to try and make an educated decision with the with the uh, information that's put before us. And in the last couple of years, it seems like it hasn't been. All there, or it's just been, it, you know, it's, it's surprising that it was that we were down. I, I believe it was 68 percent on, on South Street. That should have been somebody should have at least thought about that. Where with Lonza gone and some other ones, we should have put that into the calculation two years ago because Lonza was already gone for three years at that point, and said, "Hey, uh, we're, this, we're gonna, might show something. This something might come up." Then I wouldn't even consider doing a, a, a rate cut before. You know, 35% is, is is insane. I know that Mr. Kerr um, is going to pick up on that one in a couple of minutes. But uh, you know, I just you know we have to do what, what it takes to, to keep the, the system going. But we definitely need better better um, research and insight for, for, for next year. So this so it's not a, a big surprise to us and to all the uh, ratepayers. Sir, we hear that direction and we understand it fully and we are very strongly committed to giving you all the information you need to keep track of this on a multi-year basis and, and I, uh, I must say though I do love the I do love the, the real-time uh, changes that we can we can actually watch the graph change right this this year that really does help Great. what two percent what three percent what 35 percent will Sorry. we'll end up doing for the system so thank you for that Mr. Herr? Wasn't there some discussion with the team about a, a, a fixed number for the senior population of some kind? Or a tier. Is that what it, this tier that's what talking tier about is? is? Uh, I thought it was more of a yes. fixed number. It, yes. You, you raise a good question. And, and in fact, um, even in speaking with um, the chair, we, we, we he, he did raise this question, and, and, and I will pose it to, to, to the team as well as to the board. Uh, other communities do provide relief uh, for seniors um, that is based on uh, qualifications uh, contained in the property tax relief program. And I think the question that uh, Mr. Teston put forth, which I, I believe is also what, what you're getting at is, are there any opportunities here in Hopkinton to do the same above and beyond the tier program? Mm, exactly. So yeah. we have some, I'm prepared to discuss that if you're, you're interested in some yeah. information yeah. on that. Yeah. Well, that was, that was my question. <laughs> Would you please explain the options of the tier? Sure. So the, the two options that are presented there are just for rates for everybody with no, res no respect to special conditions. 
The first option is just a flat increase that the system has done before, and the second option just creates another tier which would help all the low-level users, whether they need the help or whether they don't. But there are other opportunities here. In several discussions, board members have focused on this impact, and so we spent some time on it and did some benchmarking to see how other communities handle the situation. Many communities offer sewer or water discounts to some users, and I looked at five communities that took different approaches. Ben, can you give that up to them? There are really three factors that are commonly considered in this kind of uh, effort. Factor one is who is eligible. Some communities use more restrictive criteria and some communities use less restrictive criteria. On the very restrictive side, the town of Maynard started with a really generous program but scaled it back to where it now only applies to people over 70, not 65, and only to people who are receiving one of the property tax exemptions already. So you would have to be a disabled veteran who's over 70 or a low income senior who's over 70 or a blind person who's over 70 to get this. Uh, other communities grant an, a discount to people who are over 65. Some of them have income limits and some of them have no limits. Uh, some communities like Melrose and Ayer allow low volume users over 65 to qualify with no income test. So the first question we in Hopkinton would have to ask is who qualifies if we're gonna offer a discount? The second factor is should the offer be more generous or less generous? On the more generous end, Westboro bills people who qualify under their rules a very flat rate of $40 a year for water and $40 a year for sewer. But they have a tough income test, so relatively few people qualify. For our average sewer user, that would be a discount of over 90%. On the other end of the spectrum, AIR offers a 10% discount to people who qualify under their rules. The third factor is level of consumption. It seems that several towns uh, in two of the five that I looked at uh, offer discounts to seniors who are low users. For example, Revere offers a 30% discount for seniors who use under 4,000 cubic feet a year 20% for seniors who use 4,000 to 9,400 cubic feet a year, and 10% for seniors who use a lot of water, over 9,400 cubic feet a year. So if Hopkinton were to move down this road, the board would need to define who to offer the discount to, how generous it should be, and whether it should be tied to consumption or just to the other criteria. We also need to remember that giving any user a discount shifts costs to users who are not qualifying for the discounts, so it's a pretty delicate balance. Uh, I looked at the five benchmark towns and did some rough estimates of what programs like they have might cost us here, and they're summarized on the right-hand side of that sheet. The cost range was from several hundred dollars, which would have almost no impact on other users, to about $27,000, which would have about a 2% impact on other users. So just to talk about the who and what we might want to consider, if we consider the very low income seniors who get the Section 41C property tax exemption, and that's an exemption for seniors who are longtime residents and have family incomes of under $37,000 a year. So that's quite low. Is that, uh, so the, when you say the income, is that pension, is that pension, social security, social security, security. money that they take in? Yes. Social security? Yes. Okay. So that's a pretty low income. Well, how much was that, 30,000? 30, 37. And we have 20 of those people in town right now getting that exemption. Okay. So if you were going to start by need, that is a good place to start. Okay. If you want to look at everyone who gets property tax exemptions, including the blind, the gold star, widow, the disabled veterans, that gets our number up to about 80. And if you were going to go to everybody who qualifies for the state circuit breaker, which is actually a pretty generous program, and that's a program for families, you can have a, a quite expensive house, like a $780,000 house, quarter of a million in assets, and up to $88,000 a year in family income. That's, so that's, pretty, that's a pretty healthy standard of living. Uh, and we have 250 of those people. So you would probably want to think about whether you would want to try to capture 
a group like the 250 people who qualify for the circuit breaker, the 80 people who qualify for the exemptions that we already grant through the Board of Assessors, or just the 20 people who are the uh, Section 41C, uh, very low income seniors with very limited means. And just to give you a rough number, we, you know, not everyone's a sewer user. We think the lower income people probably tend to be more so because the, it's people who live further out in some of the newer developments who are not the sewer users. So if we figure about two thirds of the population is going to be a sewer user. Uh, and we offered, for example, a $200 discount. Some towns do a flat rate discount, which would be 13% for our average user. That would cost everyone else about a 2.5% increase if we did all the people who qualify for the circuit breaker. It would cost about 0.8% to everyone else if we did the 80 people who get the other property tax exemptions. And it would cost virtually nothing, 0.2% if we just took care of the people on the 41C. So, so the 80 people that you're talking about, that, that includes the very low income seniors that are section 41C, right. the, and that'll also include the blind, gold star, disabled veteran? Yes. Oh, that's the assessment? That's the 80, I'm assuming. Yes. The what? The 80. That's the includes, 80, right, not the 250. Yeah, I have the data right here. Surviving spouses, minors, or persons 70 years and over who are limited income. It would include disabled veterans. It would include veterans and surviving spouses, the 22 E's, and certain elderly persons over 70. Okay. The recap sheet from the state here. So about 80 people. Okay. Mr. Chair. Mr. Herr. So we're in a public hearing. We'll come okay. to that, right? But, yep. Um, are you prepared to show us the rate increase numbers that we would need to vote tonight to um, accommodate those 80 people or the 250 or the 20, whatever the board decides? You accommodate those numbers into the rate increase and we can make the decision all tonight, you know what I'm saying? So this was a late breaking tasking from my supervisor and I think I'm prepared for that. Uh, I think there would be virtually <laughs> no change for the 41C cohort because it's, you know, with all the estimates, it's in the noise. Uh, I think if for the all 80 of the people getting exemptions, uh, would probably be prudent to raise the rate by a half a percent from 35 to 35 and a half and probably to 37 for the, uh, if you wanted to hit everybody on the circuit breaker. I don't understand that circuit breaker number and then some of the numbers that are associated with that, like the value of the house, Right. And, I mean, the income I can get because, you know, income can disappear very quickly if you're living in Massachusetts, but the value of the house, almost that income don't seem to apply. I don't, I don't they, understand that so much. They really wrote that law to be very, uh, to not weed people out too soon. And I think the sensitivity was to people who are, have been living in a nice house for a long time. It is appreciated underneath them. but. The, the number 778, isn't it? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. And I, I think it also has to do with your, your taxes and your water and sewer bill. That, that's another. All together can't be more than 10% of your income. So have to be more than 10%. Yeah. They have in to, order so. to get it. Have to be. So, so yeah. if you, you could have a house here above the average house, you could have a $700,000 house. And if your water, sewer, and taxes were 10,000, and your income was 87000 and you were a married couple, you would qualify for this. So I can see how somebody's been here for a long time, they've got this house that's worth a lot of money, that's but right. it wasn't necessarily coming from their income and their right. mortgage right. and everything else, right. they got this right. pretty expensive house. Yep. So that's who it's meant so for. That's why I'm a little bit more inclined. inclined to think about that grouping as well. Yeah, me too. And, and some towns create their own means test. They'll pick 50000 or 60000 in income instead of using the state circuit breaker at 88, there's just an infinite number of ways to do this, to capture the pool. And then the smaller the pool is, the more generous it can be without being very impactful on people, on everyone else. It's, it's, right. it's a complicated thing to try to discuss on the fly. Okay. Well, would, would this discount be in their, in their bills? I mean, we don't need like to have a, only reserved for people to come and apply for this 
and then get the discount or so you know, how does this thing? I, I spoke to several of the towns and I, I really wanted to understand what they offer I didn't get into the mechanics of it so what if we did something along these lines we would find a compliant approach and develop the mechanical method to achieve it I think the idea is we, we need to have a sense of uh, not doing what Maynard did which was offer 20% to everybody over 65 and 10% of the town came in the first day and filed the applications and they were overwhelmed they had to back off so this might be something where we start slow and expand it after we get some experience uh, you know there, there are many approaches to this now this this three-tier option is for the percentage uh, but it's for users only it's for the, the lower water users right yes and so we think you know the Venn diagram of low use and low income is not perfect but we think that the low use may capture a lot of older single people uh, but it also captures people who spend half the year in the south of France mm -hmm. so uh, it's not perfect okay so, so and in defense of your boss, I tasked him with this job at about 1.30 uh, this afternoon. We thrive on this kind of uh, <laughs> We thrive on this it isn't kind of opportunity. Boss that's, that's being a pain in the head. So, so yeah. no, I, I think this is great. And we had done a lot of work on it. We, you know, we were looking at it. We didn't do all this today. We, we've yep. been looking at this and discussing it and, and really trying to respond to the comments of the board. And we think our role is to provide you with the information you need to make good policy decisions. and. This is an interesting thing that other communities do, and we thought you might uh, want to explore yep. it. Yep, excellent. Okay. So I, th I think through the chair, um, what you are hearing from staff is that the board considers um, the options provided. Um, the tiered option, I think, would be advisable because it lines up water and sewer, so we follow the same formula. The last option that we just discussed based on the questions from Mr. Teston and Mr. Hay, as well as the comments that were expressed by the board uh, during the informal hearing uh, regarding mitigating the impact of a 35% increase on the low users and fixed income uh, residents is in addition, I just want to make sure that the board understands this, that it's in addition to uh, moving to a tiered solution. Okay. Yeah. And on, so did we come up with a set dollar number on this? Uh, so I, I, you know, I, some other towns have used $200 and uh, I, I would say that the $200 rate is incredibly affordable for the 41C, the very low income seniors. It's pretty affordable for the group of everyone getting exemptions and it's on the expensive side for the whole group of people who get the circuit breaker. So if you wanted to go to the whole circuit breaker, you might start out at $100 relief instead of 200. And 100 so would a still be a 13% reduction for the average user. So we will still, on, on, these, um, on these people, we will still be monitoring their usage, uh, their water and sewer usage. There wouldn't simply just be a flat rate. That, that's not, uh, that's, that is so expensive for us. Uh, you know, if, if you made the flat rate uh, as Northboro does, $40, that becomes very expensive. I mean, it's a $500 discount per recipient, and that's, uh, and the sewer enterprise is challenged. I, yep. It's a lot to put on to the other users at the same time. So yep. it's a, uh, this, so this could so be a we, start slow, yeah. uh, you know, a start, a one start slow approach would be a $200 discount for all 80 or all 20 of those groups of recipients or, you know, a $100 for all the circuit breaker people. Those would be reasonable things to start with and test and see. You know, we could also incite more people applying if we start giving more discounts. There may be people who don't bother to apply now, so we really want to be uh, this is really a thing I would prefer to test in a good year 
when revenue is good and we have some reserves. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is the year when we're impacting people. Yep. And so we want to maybe take a little more risk than we might ordinarily take. Yeah. So in that regard, uh, and I'm directing this to the finance team, starting slow may mean going with a group of 20. The 41C. I mean, there's, there's no argument that yeah. if you own a home and are living here and paying our taxes and rates, and you qualify for that 41C with an income of under $37,000, that's a pretty substantial level of need. Having just gone a price chopper last night, I can, that's, that's, that's a pretty needy group. So if we, so say we were to apply that $200 discount to the, um, 80%, which includes that 41C, blind, gold star, disabled veteran. Right. I would, uh, I would recommend then, you know, looking at it right now that the, that the, uh, you increase the uh, proposed raises by half a percent. Half. So from one, 35 one half to of 35. One from 35 to 35 and a half? Yes, sir. Or the 80? Yes. Okay. To, to take care of the 80 with that level of sure. support. Sure. Now that, that would be under both approaches, uh, the option one and option two? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And pr more important to do the half percent, well, and I would do it for across the board for option one and option two sure. at the discrete rates. Sure. We don't want to outsmart ourselves trying to be we, we still need to meet our regulator's yep. requirement, and we're, we're, we're working with a pretty sharp pencil here. Yep. Okay. Yes, um, perhaps at this point, we would ask the board if there are any further questions on SOA, uh, and if the board does not have any further questions on SOA, we will turn to the public and ask if the public has any questions on SOA before we turn to water. Okay. Yeah. Does the board have any further questions on SOA? Do not. No. No. Okay. Public. No. Okay. So we'll move on to water. Great. Wrap up water is quite a bit simpler. <laughs> yeah. Here. This year. This year. <laughs> uh, again, referencing the summary sheet, the first four points on the summary sheet review what we discussed at the last meeting. Water is stable now, as Mr. Kamalo said, but due to a projected drop off in connection fees and an expected capital need for new debt, the water enterprise will need more fee revenue to remain stable in 2025 and beyond. And we recommend addressing that earlier rather than later and doing so with more modest increases now rather than very large increases later. Option one is to begin a series of 2% rate increases now and to track the situation as we approach 2025 with the probability that we'll make some slightly different adjustment as we get closer to 2025. Option two is there to recognize that we are gonna have very large increases in the sewer enterprise this year and next year and that many of our water users are also sewer users. So that option would delay the ramp up in water rates until after customers have a chance to adjust to these sewer changes. So instead of going 2% two, 2 increases all along, we would pause the water for a while to provide some relief and then start some 6% increases to catch up and get on track so we're not facing a big bulge in 2025. The most important thing to remember about water is that no action on rates for several consecutive years will land us in a situation similar to the one we're in with sewer in 2025 where a very large rate increase will be required. So because of the situation with sewer, we're providing option two as a, a second alternative. If it weren't for the sewer situation, we would really be very strongly advocating for the slow, steady increase in rates. But uh, this could be a tough year for our users. Okay. 
So based on uh, is there a moderate use? So we, I know we have the low users and the high users. Yes, based on the on the on a moderate user, uh, when we talk about that option one, the two percent increase. Right. What? Uh, give me a dollar. Number. So if if you look at this summary sheet that it was in the package, and I can speak from it, uh, that section on the right of the table shows our entire user profile and it shows that the average user in the 50th percentile uses about 60 hundred cubic feet a year 6,000 cubic feet a year and that their rates would go from 177 dollars to 181 dollars four dollars a year imperceptible okay. nearly imperceptible uh, increase although i am a veteran who gets care from the va and I can tell you when prescriptions went from a dollar to two dollars, people screamed about the 100% increase. So there will be a small number of people who, who can still find a way to, to not like this very good story with sewer, but uh, you know, that's, that's a pretty low impact. And what we did there is show, you know, and for people at the very bottom who use almost no water, it goes from $51 to $52, it's a dollar. And then you see the big top users. And we have people using a quarter of a million cubic feet of water. And I thought my kids took long showers, but that is a lot of water. And they would have a $66 impact. This is a residence? They, uh, those are the top 15 users in the whole system. We have residences over 100,000. Uh, I don't know what the top residence tops out at. I, I don't know if you know, but I, I, I looked through the whole data file and a couple things jumped out, but I don't. There are residences using over 100,000 cubic feet. I assume they have orchards or, you know. Yeah, yeah. well, then they need to pay a little bit more. <laughs> or, or elephants, you know. They, they <laughs> <laughs> car wash for the Kiwanis, I don't know, but it's, we can say car wash here. But, but the water, you know, <laughs> the, the rates for, our rates for water are very competitive and the impacts are pretty modest, so. It's really more about, you know, do you, do you want to, how do you want to treat this user cohort because it has the half overlap with the sewer cohort this year. Is that it? Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Well, I will take comments from the board on this. I'll start down this way. Mary Jo? Well, I think, I think that's pretty clear. I, I was looking at Mr. Abrams' report earlier, which was had no increase this year and next year, but then 6%. And I think that we really do have to do the 2% two, two for the water. It just doesn't make sense not to. Okay. Mr. Hurt? I agree with Mr. Frenier. Mr. Catino? Yeah, we don't want it. We don't want another spike in uh, three or four years. Mr. Nassau? Yeah, I agree. I think the 2% makes a lot of sense just to, and I understand the impact on, uh, with the sewer rates, but even the largest users are only paying $66. So, uh, and if they're using that much water, I think they can afford it. All right. Is there any comment from the public? Hearing none. Mr. Chair, we close the public hearing. Second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Okay. Through the chair, you know, it's, it's funny, you know, two years ago I would have been arguing, what do we really need a 2% increase? But with the 35% uh, the increase, it's like, okay, only two, it's not too bad. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's still, it, it, it's, a, it's a shame that we don't have an, a, enough users for both water and sewer. And then, you know, that's, you know, that, that's on us as a town, uh, the chamber and the, and the town, the planning board, the zoning and everything else to do what we can to try and attract businesses to uh, utilize that $16 million um, uh, betterment that we did for South Street. We really do have to work hard to uh, attract uh, businesses to our town, whatever we can do. So I will, Mr. Kamala, would it be appropriate for me to request a motion for option one on the water? Would now be the, the time to? Option one is 2%. Yes, um, correct, please. Sounds like the board was in agreement. That's the only reason why I'm. Yeah, yeah I mean, yes. Take care of that. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I will. Uh, 
Make a motion to uh, make a motion to accept uh, option one on the uh, water. Second. So, second. Any further discussion? And none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. That's good. All right. So now we'll talk yeah. about sewer. If I may, through the chair, and the motion will reflect that uh, the new rates are effective July 1, 2019. And that was a two percent. That, that's two percent. Yeah. Um, okay, so I guess we got to talk about the sewer uh, enterprise and the uh, option one, option two, or something in between there. So, so one thing that concerns me about the option two, where we have the rising, the rising levels, is uh, the rising percentages, is um, conservation basically. I mean, are people when people are knowing how much of an increase uh, the, you know, their, their bills will be, we're going to have some conservation. People want to lower their, the amount that they're using. And then I ask, will we, <laughs> will we still have enough money <laughs> you know, yeah. to make up for all the conservation? Um, as opposed to just going 35% across the board, where everyone's getting hit the same. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, Sir, the both options provide the same amount of money. We talked briefly at the last meeting about this issue, the elasticity of demand that if we raise rates this much, use could go off. And the town accountant just came and whispered that in my ear again, that we should be aware that there's a possibility that use will go down. So we have a lot of things going on. We have some growth occurring. We could have some decline in use from the rate. I, I, uh, when you're already raising 35 percent, uh, I think my my preference would be to, if we have a use drop, we explain it to the DOR and we adjust next year. Okay. And we're making a good faith effort to solve this problem. It's a large, substantial, compelling change to stabilize the system. We know we're signaling here on recorded public record the need for another rate change next year. Uh, I just don't know that you want to go too much farther with, you know, rate changes in <coughs> case dro use drops off that could themselves lead to more use dropping off, right? It's that negative cycle. And so it's an excellent question. How do we hit the sweet spot without doing even more damage driving users out? And, and it's an excellent point. And, I'm ready to make the argument to DOR that we're doing a good job. And a very conservative person who never wanted to come here and get yelled at by you a year later <laughs> would tell you you have to raise them 42% because we could have this rate drop. And but we're trying to be sensitive to the to the rate holders as well. Okay. Rate payers. Board. Well, I guess uh, Mr. Catino, you're the next guy up on the prices, right? No, it, it's again. It's there's there's not much we can do at this point. We're, we're, we're stuck with this, and uh, we we have to solve the problem. And it's it's, uh, it's going to be a tough pill to swallow. People yeah. are going to be upset, but uh, yeah. um, there's nothing we can do about it. Nothing we can do about it. But you had a great proposal there to uh, to try and alleviate it on our on our most uh, marginalized uh, yep. people. Mr. Her, are we still on option one and or two? Or are we on option one or two and the 80 or 250. I think we're on option one or two right now. Including the 80 or, or uh, tackle that separately? Yeah. Uh, because the board is deliberate, deliberating, I think the board should look at this comprehensively. So it's, either option, it's either option one plus, okay. yes, or option two plus, yes. All right, so, Mr. Her? So, um, in general, and I think it's an important comment, uh, not because I'm saying it, but I just think <laughs> um, we're running a business here. It's the water and sewer enterprise business. Mm -hmm. We have customers. We have a couple of big customers that have gone away. And I've run a lot of businesses over the years with all, a lot of people in town. And when you lose a couple of big customers, you have to adjust. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that adjustment is very difficult. And that's what this is. That's what it boils down to for me. 
Uh, it's not like, you know, for six years we sat around and did nothing, just watched the sewer and water implode, but in the last couple of years we've lost these customers and that's caused a big challenge. So I think it's important to get that out there. Uh, and as a result, we have to adjust. So my view would be to do the uh, uh, tiered approach with, um, I'm between the 80 and the 250, somewhere in there. I'm kind of stuck on I'm not sure which one. Okay. That's what I have for it at this moment. Okay. Mr. Farnia? Well, I have to agree with Mr. Herr. I was for the tier approach where the lesser water users get a, get a break and the more water you use, the more you pay. And, you know, we might get some conservation with that also, but I, I think the tier approach is, is the logical approach for us. Okay. So, um, I also feel the same way that you guys do on the tiered approach. I like the um, option number two with the 80, um, with the uh, the section 41C, which includes the blind, the gold star, disabled veterans, etc., cetera, uh, and not including up to the 250. I, and I was initially, I my thought process was the 250, um, and the reason that I changed that is you made a, a, a good argument to say that if we start low, uh, monitor it. If it's a successful program, we're able to weather the storm, so to speak, then we can maybe expand it next year to the, um, to the 250. But for right now, that's my thought process on the why I would like to go with the 80 and not the uh, 250. You know, I think that those will hit probably some of the people that are most in need. And um, anytime I have a chance, or we have, sorry, we have a chance to include the, um, the veterans and the Gold Star families, those are very near and dear to my heart. Um, that's my thought process on that. Mr. Chairman, uh, so just to tell you what the numbers would be for that, so to give the $200 discount to the people who qualify for the exemptions, that group of 80, the rates for option two would go up to 19.5 uh, 41.5 for the second group and 42.5 for the third group. Those would be this year's rate increases. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. Do the chair. Yes, Mr. Nasco. I want to give a pitch on the 35% across the board. Okay. Um, when we're talking about a tiered approach, we're saying that if you're using X amount of water, you're going to get this. And if you go up, then you use up. Then you're, you're, you're paying a higher amount per gallon, mm -hmm. right? Um, you can also reduce your bill by using less water. Mm -hmm. So any, I mean, if we if we went, what the, the the question I'm raising is when we have the tiered approach, I think the final number that we're going to get at the end is a little nebulous. We're not sure what it's going to be. Whereas with the 35%, we know that there's going to be some conservation, 35% across the board. We know there's going to be some conservation, but I think that final number becomes a little more definitive. Right? And if, and I fully support the, uh, the 80 people, the, the Gold Star families, and the extreme poor, and they, you know, the 35% is, uh, when we give them that discount, it's certainly not going to impact them as hard. Sure. So I'm actually in favor of the 35% across the board um, with, the, uh, with the relief for the 80. Um, don't know if this is Mr. Cardi or Mr. Westerling. Can you give me um, a percentage of houses in town that use the the lowest tier, the middle tier, and the highest tier? Uh, Approximate. Oh, sir, I, I can actually give you that. Try to uh, so the, the first tier for under 10 would be 20% of the people use. Okay. No, I'm sorry, that's the 10th percentile. Uh, no, nope, it's less. <laughs> it's less. The 10th percentile is 2,000 cubic feet. So it's somewhere under the 10th percentile that you use that lowest tier. And then if you go up to the 8,000 cubic feet, you're talking up to about the 70th percentile. And then above that is the top 
selling my house and explaining 28,000 times why I took mine offline. Because you can have green grass through June and Hopkinton. July 4th comes, you want to turn it on, and the town says turn it off. And I turned mine off, and then I just took it offline because it was too much. But I'm wondering how much of our users are in this grouping, and I'm going to get nasty dreams about attacking people's grass, but what percentage of our users are in this group that just love to water their grass when they should be watering their grass by law? Right? Can you answer that, or is that just the percentage too part? I couldn't. I know that the tier part uh, uh, definitely people do take that into consideration. You, you can see some of that in the figures that they do it. And just as a note, too, the state actually does require that we have an increase in tier. That's a requirement for all municipalities. Just as a note. So the top 20 percent use over 9,400 cubic feet of water, which is which is 50 percent above our mean. So. Half again above the mean, and so they're so definitely watering our lawn. They're 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 doing something. They're, they're <laughs> through the chat. We fill pools. I fill pools too. I get it. Not anymore. So through the chat. That's not a lot of water. So the conundrum is, we really do want to sell water. Yeah. We really do want to sell water. We just don't want to go dry. You know, but. You know, uh, but we know, we, you know yeah. that's well. That does gets the other question: Do we have enough water in this town? That's the, that's been the question for the last twenty years, and you get different answers when customers want to when when, when companies want to come in. You know, do we have enough water to, if if another Lonza wanted to come in? Since we have the sixteen million dollar upgrade to our system going up there for water and sewer, you know. Can we support them? Because you know, some people say, "Oh no, well, Hopkinton has no water. You know, you don't want to go to Hopkinton." You know, definitively, does Hopkinton have enough water? Who's the chair? Yes. Uh, the 2014 report done by Weston Sampson on water supply and treatment evaluation showed that the town is challenged by to provide enough water to all of our customers, especially during those months of June, July, and August. Uh, and as the town grows, demand grows. So that period when we're not able to supply sufficient water, that extends out to May, June, July, August, September. So as, as the system grows, our ability to provide that water decreases. Fortunately, we have the, the town of Ashland, an intermunicipal agreement with Ashland, where they can supply that water during the peak periods. But as Hopkinton Reservoir drains, they're no longer able to supply the water that we need. October, November, their ability to provide water that we need diminishes greatly. So we're, we're, we're challenged to be able to provide sufficient water from our own sources. Uh, but again, fortunately, we have that, that supply from Ashland, which is, again, that is at risk as they use it and as they grow as the water levels. It was just two or three years ago we were in a serious yep. drought here in New England. Yeah. And, um, Yet we were watering lawns. When we were not supposed to be watering lawns in the community, we absolutely were. There were people in my neighborhood doing it and every other neighborhood I drove through in town. Uh, and the, in the reservoir, the, the Hockey State Park Reservoir, I mean, you could walk out almost to the middle of that thing. It was scary. So yeah, we need to sell water, but we need to be responsible no, no. residents about what we do with that water. And if the tiered approach is gonna help guide a little of that behavior, that's one of the reasons why I was thinking we look at that. I understand the flat rate, but I, mm -hmm. if it's not going to guide the behavior, then you know, I'd take the argument off the table. But I think it might. Mr. Kamala, 
In fact, Ms. Hay, um, you, you took the words out of my mouth. I, I hear the board's comments regarding conservation. I hear the board's questions regarding the tiered approach versus the flat rate approach. I think and I believe the tiered approach has a clear nexus and a clear connection with conservation. Why that is important comes back to the question raised by Mr. Cortino, namely, if we're going to sell more water, the town will need to have the permit to withdraw more water. Mm -hmm. For the town to get the permit to withdraw more water, we need the conservation. So, in a way, I think the tiered approach may be the best, better option of getting the town to continue pursuing measures that balance these conflicting needs. Mr. Catino. Water meters. Will we ever go more than half the distance to the goal line? Remember we said, uh, you know, Mr. Catino, 10%, 10%, we're going to do 10% a year, but then when we were growing, at that, at that same rate, and, and it just seemed like we were never going to catch up. Are we ever going to catch up? Mr. Chair, water meters ties into unaccounted for water and non-revenue water all at once. Uh, so a couple of points on non-revenue water. We offer conservation kits to our residents. We conduct annual leak detection surveys. Last year we found two small uh, leaks that we repaired right away. We completed our third water audit uh, and eliminated unaccounted for water of our efforts, we are functionally equivalent to DEP's goal for unaccounted for water. And with regard to water meters, we're on pace to replace 400 water meters this year, which gets to the 10%. And we're targeting the replacement of the oldest meters first. And we do test a sample of the meters that we replace, and they all show that they're reading accurately in spite of their age. Sure. Thank you. All right. Good chair. Mr. Nasrullah. Last thing. Last thing. Um, Mr. Herr got me thinking about the Water, watering lawns when we're not supposed to, and <laughs> I've seen plenty of sprinklers going on uh, while it's raining. And uh, one of the questions I had is, do we have any kind of program or any kind of uh, ability to negotiate for, for smart uh, controllers for, you know, for sprinkler systems? Well, I'm not saying requiring it. I'm saying offer, like, through volume discount. So if the, if the DBW were able to negotiate with any of these companies that provide smart water sprinkler controllers, um, maybe, you know. Through the chair, we can certainly look at that. Uh, we do offer, as I said, uh, uh, conservation kits, and that's through uh, partnership with DEP. Mm -hmm. So we can look to see if there's anything out there. It would depend on uh, the systems that folks have and the that's certainly something we can explore. Okay. We're all set? All right. I will entertain a motion for if someone wants to make a motion uh, to uh, set our rates for the sewer enterprise. Nobody will. I will make one. Uh, I would like to, I move to incorporate the 80 residents with a 41C, including the blind gold star disabled American veterans, into the sewer option to that tiered, uh, that tiered option. How's that? So I'll that's second. Right. With the rate being 17.5 increase for the lowest tier, 39.5 for the middle tier, and 42.5 for the highest tier. That's including, including that. the 80. Okay. Yes, so 17.5, you, you initially said it was 19.5. Uh, that was for the whole that was uh, uh, circuit breaker group. Oh, okay, okay. So that you can cover the 80 with that increase. 17.5, 41.5, 42.5. 17 17.5, 39.5, 42.5. Okay. Using option two. Additional, just, yep. a, just an extra half a percent on yep. everything at option two. <laughs> So there's a motion and a second? So it was motion and second. And is there any further discussion on the board? So just one second. quick comment if I could, because I, I can see them popping up soon. I love green grass. 
I really do. I was obsessed with green grass until I was about 45. And then I just kind of like, was like, whatever, you know, it's, I just kind of gave up on it a little bit. Um, so please, I'm not trying to disparage anybody that's trying to have their house look beautiful. It does look great, but we have a challenge with water. We have a challenge with the rates. We have a challenge mm -hmm. with our economics here. Uh, so I'm not going after people that love green grass. I'm just trying to figure out the balance here. And that's why I'm sort of jumping on the watering the grass during the spring of rain that we've had this year. Uh, situation so but, but mr to the chair mr hurt i've i've never had a sprinkler system and my lawn looks perfect you plant the right kind of grass doesn't use water <laughs> so perfect shout out to mary pratt with her drought resistant grass it's <laughs> true um uh, so well, we're looking for discussion so yeah so we're still on discussion okay so um just looking at the graph you had here and the user impact yes, um you have at the very bottom difference between option one and option two, right? Right. So, the last ditch effort on the 35 across the board. Um, when we look at the user impact for the, you know, the, the, the 10th percentile, the, it's 35 bucks. Right. Right? It's 30 bucks for the next year, 20 bucks for the, right? Yes, sir. So, are we? My, I guess my question is: uh, If we go with the tiered approach, are we really? Um, is, is it that much of an impact for the lowest end users? We're talking thirty-five dollars. So the exact answer is: For the low users, instead of a sixty-seven dollar increase, they have a thirty-two dollar increase. Right. So it's half the increase for them. So if you felt the sixty-seven dollar increase was a lot for them. It takes half of that off. If you look at the middle users, it was 194, and then because they have already bumped into the second tier, they're only saving twenty dollars. So it starts to fade off. The more you use, so it's a pro-conservation measure because the more you use, the less benefit you get from the tier, the tiered approach that is reflected in option two. I mean, we could have used different tiers, but to create a bigger spread. And that's why I put that line in there, to mm -hmm. show you that this doesn't really change anybody's life. Mm -hmm. It's just a little relief for some people who may find a $60 increase to be a lot. And it's really... And those folks are in our community, and I've been in their living rooms, and they said, you know, that $20 changed last year. Yep. I didn't think about it. I had my Social Security coming each month, and all of a sudden, you know, my hundred eighty dollars in expendable money for the week was one hundred sixty bucks. What's up with that, Brian? And I've had those conversations over the years. So mm -hmm. it's it, a lot of us twenty dollars is twenty dollars, but a lot of us twenty dollars is twenty dollars. We need to be I think cognizant of matters. Yeah. So okay. through you, um, Tim, if I'm reading this right, those two I mean, sorry, those eighty folks that fall into the parameters. With that two hundred dollar discount, if they're a low user, right, their wa their sewer bill is now going to be about twenty four dollars a year. Right, that's awesome. Right. That really is that, awesome. That, so to, it's a big, it's a big. Difference it's for it's that. giant right. for those people. It really is, and and I'd like to thank you, and I'd like to thank Mr. Kamalu for jumping on this on such short notice and getting this done. Yeah. It, it's, uh, yeah, you know, the the seniors have always been. Uh, Pretty, pretty close to, to me and, and, and a driving force as a selectman. And the fact that you guys could put this together in, in uh, basically four or five hours is awesome. Thank you very much for doing this for me, for us. So the motion's on the table, it's seconded. Do we have any further discussion, Mr. Kamala? Administratively, the motion will reflect that it's, the discount is $200. Yes, okay, yes. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstentions carries. Thank you very much. On time. Good work. Thanks. Mr. Kamalu, I owe you a fresca because I did not think we were going to fit this in an hour. <laughs> yeah, we did water for water and sewer. Thank you guys. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, John. No, I know it's tough, but I remember the vote. Yep. Yeah, I, again, Mr. Chair, through you, I really want to thank uh, John Westerling, Eric, uh, Mark from the, uh, Matt from the Abrahams Group. Uh, Tim O'Leary, uh, Ben Sweeney, uh, Dave. Dave was somewhere here. I can't see Dave. 
Uh, they've done a fantastic job getting us ready for these discussions. Very well, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the it's, interactive part. It's hard to believe that I, I'm actually excited for a 35% increase about it, <laughs> but uh, yeah. it really... I think the uh, team should be ready to get a few phone calls asking how this is going to impact our seniors. I'm sure folks will be reaching out to them. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So be ready. Yep. That's great. Thanks for that. Uh, so, just to come out on an earlier question, I asked you if we needed to wait till 8:40 for this tree hearing. Do we? It's not. A, it doesn't say public hearing. It's yeah, it's not a posted hearing. But where's John? <laughs> you forgot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. John, you gotta stay. So. <laughs> Sir. All right, so the tree warden held a tree hearing on Monday, June 10th for the removal of three town trees on Hayden Road necessary for the completion of the intersection of the project at Chestnut Street. The removal of the trees is required to allow the installation of the new utility poles to accommodate the new pavement design and the installation of the traffic signal. There were no attendees at the public hearing. However, one resident objected to the removal of the 40-inch maple tree in front of 185 Hayden Row. The only way for the tree to be removed is by the decision of the select board. So, um, all right. So, basically, Mr. Westerling, there are three trees that have to come down. You posted a public hearing. Nobody showed. You got a letter, probably, or an email stating that yep. the resident at 185 is opposed to us taking their 40 inch maple tree in front of their house. They're opposed here. to taking down the town's. Sure. 40 inch. Yep. Correct. Yep. On town property, but in front of their house? Correct. Um, 185 is, the of that? is obviously distal to. So 185, this is, this is Chestnut yep. Street yep. and Hayden Row. Uh, if you're turning, if you're coming out of Chestnut Street, 185 yep. is the house on the left. Okay. And the tree is right here on the corner. Yep. I know it well. I've been to a few of those car accidents. And I did reach out to both Eversource and Verizon to ask if there was any way to save the trees. And they both said that in order to save the trees, they'd have to redesign their entire yeah. uh, electrical and enough telephone. Said. Yeah, enough and said. Include property rights and delays to the project, which we've yeah. already and suffered. I'm sure they're both going to jump right on that. Because they're that responsive. If I may, yes. through the chair. Um, can you confirm that the resident who emailed this concern was contacted for this hearing? They were contacted by email and asked to call me so that we could look to see if we could, uh, what the options were there to ameliorate the loss of the tree, and I have not heard back. Okay, can second. You can you confirm the time of 8.40 p.m.? Yeah. Well, it's for tonight. Through the chair. At the, at, the, at the tree hearing, the tree warden closed the public hearing. There was no one there, okay. and then extended it to the Board of Selectmen meeting, and I did reach out by email to those residents on two occasions, and I haven't heard back. I don't so believe that they you, live there. Do you, Mr. Kamala? One second. Can you verify that the the person that was the, the person that was against the removal is the property owner of the home, and not a tenant? Uh, that, yes, I can. Okay. Uh, through, Mr. Chairman, the on the the maps here. So there's now a formally Elizabeth V. Davidson, trustee. And it was the email was from uh, Ms. Davidson. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, and through Brian Bento used to own that for a long time. Oh yeah, through the chair. Yes. Uh, John, do you do you mind bringing up the Google Map so that the board can see the tree? Sure. Bear with me. Yeah, we can go on the street level and look at it. Yeah. yeah. Did you get your bucket truck yet to remove said tree? No, if sir. that's uh no sir. For what it's worth. So it's it's yeah. this tree here. Yeah. And for what it's worth, uh, I had a discussion uh, as I was seeking a quote from a Joe Regan tree. He said that this tree, the, the top has fallen off several times. There's nothing left of value to the tree. These are all 
uh, okay. suckling limbs that have come in afterwards. Um, it, is a, it is an old tree, however it is in the way, and we can certainly look and work with the, the property owner to put in uh, shrubs or bushes yep. or a couple of smaller trees back to where that was. Okay. Oh, Good. All right. Any discussion, further discussion on the board? I just want to reaffirm what Mr. Weston just said there. So we're going to take that tree out yeah. and we're going to put in some low, perhaps some low height plantings to soften the corner a little bit. We will we'll work with the property owner as we have with the other property owner across, across uh, Chestnut Street. We'll work with that property owner to see what we can do there to, uh, to lessen the impact of losing that tree. Okay. All right. Well, good. Good. We're good. Oh yeah. One, oh one last look. look. Just the fact that it's dying. Yeah. Look at that. Here's yeah. a good look. You can see that the, the the actual trunk of the tree has gone. Yeah. And these are just lower branches okay. that are. Yeah. That's branching up. That makes it so. So, got Mr. Nestor. Sorry. Uh, is is it true that this tree is really dying? I mean, is that what the the tree warden is saying that it's going to fall on its own or? Uh, through we the chair. If it were dead or dying, we would have removed it. Uh, out of right, uh, but because it's not, we had to post the tree hearing. Okay. And again, here's another angle. You can see that the trunk is gone. Yeah. The top of the tree has gone. So these are, and the, I suspect that what I was talking about with Mr. Regan, the top of the tree here is rotten. There's not a lot of value left to this so poor old tree. A concern that I have, Mr. Westerling, is if we take this tree down that is in, I guess you'd say, in disrepair. I would not want the town to be on the hook if the property owner wanted to, wanted to replace it with seven or eight 12 foot tall Japanese maples at $8,000 each. Mm -hmm. So there, there would need to be, a, you know, I'm glad with, with kind of making some ground cover, some shade or, or whatever, but you know, it, can be a, uh, it can be a beech tree from Western Nurseries and not a, uh, not a couple of you know, six foot tall Japanese maples. We're under no obligation to do anything no. okay. by, by, okay. by law. Right. Right. We're trying to be reasonable yep. and accommodating. I yep. don't understand it's going to be a change for that resident. Okay. But yeah, I totally agree. It's kind of important to check. Right. We're just trying to sort it out. I hear you, Mr. Chairman. Maybe come on reasonable and say, right. Mr. Kamalo, on the left side of that screen right there, is that a double pull? <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a double pull. Yeah. It couldn't be, though. They, they've got those all taken care of. Yeah. Um, that's going to be. That's going to be. Exactly. Yeah, that'll be. Yeah. So, all right. So, I will, uh, John, you want to make a motion on this one? If we're ready, are we ready for a motion? Okay. If I seem rushed here, it's because it's my daughter's birthday today. Oh. I'm trying to get home. Uh, All right. Right. I'd like to make a motion to approve the removal of a town tree, the 40 inch maple, in the Hayden Row right of way in front of 185 Hayden Row, so as to allow for the work necessary to complete the Hayden Row Chestnut Street intersection project. You have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second? Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Carries. Good. Mr. Thank Wesley, you thank much. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on. Town Manager's Report. Yeah, three items through the Chair. Um, Hopkinton Sustainable Green Committee. I'm requesting board authorization to review the charge for the committee and also ref offer recommendations to the board at a future meeting. Uh, reasons are twofold. One, we have two members of the old committee who have continued doing fantastic work, bringing advantageous and beneficial uh, grants to the community, working alongside the town facilities director. And then most recently, I had a meeting with a couple of residents who are so passionate about this topic and they really want to get involved. So based on those two things, I'm asking the board that uh, perhaps we should take a look Great. at the charge and see how we can Absolutely, I'm good Make with some that. Board, board yep. good with that? Mm -hmm. I, yep, I good. think it's great. Uh, Wonderful. I know that Sherman and Holliston are working yep, together on that. this program. So. I just saw that one in the newspaper yesterday, yeah. Holliston. Yeah. yeah. All right, next. Yeah, Main Street Corridor Project. Uh, first off, and this is not in, in, in my notes to the board, we had a fantastic meeting with the Chamber this, this afternoon. Good. Uh, received very valuable feedback, uh, specifically 
on what we could do to continue to improve uh, the quality of the project. And several things were discussed. One was making sure that the trees that are planted are indigenous. Two, that we review um, continuing the pe flashing pedestrian sign that is in front of town hall. Um, number three, they also had suggestions on um, ed being clear on where we are adding um, recycling, or recycling receptacles, and also parking for bicycles, uh, especially along the um, stretch of uh, Main Street between the intersection as well as uh, uh, Hayden Row. Uh, again, very good meeting, good feedback given to us. The business community continues to uh, desire details on how the uh, business district will operate during construction. So we're going to look into that further. Mm -hmm. And finally, they also suggested what I thought was a great idea that there be a clear point of contact for the business community during construction. Good. And FY19 year end. Yep. Great work done by the accounting manager's office, um, Janet, Dave, and everybody else. Uh, they are now finalizing the FY19 year end processes. Uh, in my memo, I did mention a few things that I think of, I, of interest to the board grant balances, encumbrances, uh, uh, year-end transfers. These do impact uh, our free cash. And as you know, the board will also be reviewing uh, year-end transfers at your next meeting. Good. All right, liaison report. Is that all you got, Mr. Kamala? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Liaison reports. Mary Jo. Well, other than uh, I'm meeting with the Tax Relief Committee tomorrow morning. And then I have talked with the Board of Assessors, and then I've talked with the Marathon Committee, and I was speaking with some of those on this new, that want to be on the new Green Committee, and uh, gotten some feedback from the Historical Society on the, uh, the house on Main Street that we're trying to get declared historical. So okay. that's it. Mr. Her. The new chair of the school committee reached out to say hello. Um, just wanted to begin a dialogue about sort of the upcoming year. And uh, I thought it would get together sort of mid-July, late July, after I get through a couple other things. Um, but uh, the school committee is eager to uh, work with us next year and uh, looking forward to having that conversation. Yep, it's a very amenable board right now, I think. Mr. Cotino. Well, last week was a uh, whirlwind um, uh, week for the uh, BAA liaison. Uh, after the release of the RFP, the uh, BAA had me in to, for a meeting at their Boston office to discuss uh, um, the uh, impact of it and, and what they could do to help. Uh, the CEO, Tom Grilk, said um, he's enthusiastically supportive and whatever support that we need uh, over and above the support Hopkinton already um, gets for the uh, police logistics. Um, and then we had the newspaper article in 25 on that. It was wonderful. And then today, um, I went to the um, uh, economic uh, development um, seminar that was put on by um, uh, the Senate President Spilka from the uh, Mass Office of uh, Travel and Tourism was there, uh, uh, Kiko um, Oral and uh, Michael Quinlan from the marketing office. They were all interested in asking us about uh, you know, how they could help out uh, with, with, with whoever answers that uh, RFP. And, um, and Senator, Senator Spilker, again, uh, is extremely enthusiastic about it and uh, about the possibility and uh, just thinks it's going to be a great thing for the region and for the state itself. So we're getting great feedback on the uh, on the uh, the RFP going out because it just it absolutely matches with Hopkins' vision statement and uh, the economic benefits it can be just astronomical. So it's uh, it, it, we're just getting great great uh, returns on that. So thank you very much, Mr. Kamala, for getting that out because uh, uh, we're getting great results. Thank you. Good job and good job on that uh, news report there on Fox I still News. Still haven't seen that link. Yet. Hmm? Did you get the link. I'd like to see that news. Oh, sure. It's running on a continuous feed in his garage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have no. Brian, 
We can run it up there. Yeah, we can run it here. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Then the 2030 thing today. Uh, that that, that, that DOT. Next door, and turn it off. <laughs> Very various good. reasons. You want something else? <laughs> yeah. I just um, I had a thought, and I meant to say something earlier. Um, the marathon fund committee. The marathon committee had a vote, and they voted Charles Wallace to replace me on the marathon fund committee. And he's been going to all the meetings, and the Marathon Fund Committee voted to accept Chuck Wallace as their member from the Marathon Committee. Good. He's uh, pretty well known in town. Um, so I, I had a. Husband, right? I, yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. So I had a uh, op couple open space meetings, and we've been talking about a few properties here and there, and sprucing things up, and uh, that's going pretty well. I would like to mention that the uh, I spent uh, uh, a good portion of my kids' inheritance at the carnival uh, <laughs> this week, and uh, that seemed to go off kind of without a hitch. I didn't hear of any uh, no, any adverse issues or parking or or angry neighbors or anything. So it's it's uh, hats off to Aaron Graziano and her crew and, and uh, for the people that were that went out and was. Um, did such a good job kind of proactively taking care of any issues and concerns. Um, and um, that's all I have there. F future board agenda items. Anyone got anything? No? Okay, I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <laughs> So you guys yeah. sign those things in a couple of weeks. The chairman, way to go, my goodness.